From your experience, what do you think is the most difficult part of data analytics? Is it learning all the tools, knowing how to present them beautifully through graphs? Is it about collecting the data or is it about preparing the data? As it might sound very simple when I say preparing the data, but in reality it isn't. When I work on some client projects, I assume that it's going to take maybe a few minutes or at most few hours to clean up the data. But in reality, I end up spending at least a day or two sometimes, depending on the size of the data set, to clean the data or technically we call that as pre-process the data. Essentially, you are preparing the data. So what do you think are the steps involved in preparing the data? Let's assume that uh, we'll take a small data set. We'll not worry about large data sets. We're not going to talk about integrating it with uh, BI tools, etc. For most of the analysis or data discovery kind of projects, you might have a system from which you will download a report most probably it would be in a CSV file format or it might be a flat file and you could have more than one source of data. So you might have to merge the data sets together. You might also have to clean up the data by removing empty cells, formatting the data. For example, date should be date, numbers should be numbers and not text. The columns and the headers should be aligned. Empty cells, as I pointed out earlier, have to be treated. You may have to fill them with something or you might have to remove the whole uh, row in which the data is present. And you might have to do similar operations. Right. So all this sounds like very mundane kind of stuff that we all know how to do. But for a period of time, I learned a set of steps or a routine of how I prepare my data for analysis and I find that pretty useful and I want to share these with you in the next few minutes. I'm not an expert and some of you might be smarter than me and might know much more uh, cool tricks when it comes to playing around and cleaning up the data but all I can tell you is this has really helped me and I'm sure it will help many of you. So here's the deal. If you want to actually practice this hands-on, then the data set that I'm going to be using is provided right below in the link. Download it and we can do it together. So let's move on now. So let's get started. I'm going to use this data set called as uh, sales data LSX. Usually it would be a CSV file but it can also be a flat file like a text file or in this case uh, it's an excel file. So let's uh, click and open this file. So here we are. This is the data set that we are having. So let's first examine what kind of a data set this is and I'm sure you would have seen such data sets before where when you download it from an application um, you would have all the data dumped into either one particular cell or you might find that each row is dumped in one particular cell instead of uh, all of them arranged in the form of a data table. So the first row contains obviously the headings. So that's the good news for us. We are able to identify what uh, data is actually here. And if you just uh, eyeball, you will be able to find that uh, this is something to do with uh, sales because it talks about the shipping date, the order, date, uh, it talks about shipping mode, customer ID, customer name, talks about uh, location, that is geography, talks about product uh, subcategory, product name, quantity, sales. So typically this is a, a sales data. We have got a dump of a sales data. Here we have uh, 70 rows and uh, 69 actual rows and one heading here. So we're not really worried about what analysis we need to perform on this data. Let's assume for a minute that our objective here is to clean this data and prepare it for analysis. That is make it ready in such a way that you could plot any graph or any chart that you wish to do so. So uh, the first activity for us would be to remove this delimiter or you find that special character here. Let me zoom this a little bit. 
and you would realize that uh, there is a special character more like a box which is separating uh, each and every uh, cell here. Now what we need to do is to make sure that this is removed and each item here sits in a unique column and that is aligned to the respective heading of that data set. You can accomplish this in more than one way. Uh, let me first show you one of the most common ways that people do and that works but I use a much more uh, simpler way. So one of the most common methods that people use is uh, text to columns. It, it falls under data and uh, so I am going to select this uh, entire column and click on this and you see it's talking about uh, whether it is uh, split by delimited or by fixed width. Uh, let me just give OK. Let me just give OK to all this. OK, here is the output that we have got. Um, luckily for us, things all seem to be sitting at the right place. So we have um, each factor or feature sitting in one particular column. But the bad news for us is that uh, the delimiter or the special character which was uh, separating each of those uh, cells there that's occupying one column everywhere. So one way you could do is to manually remo remove all of this just by deleting them but uh, I wouldn't generally recommend that because uh, usually data sets in uh, real life would have many more columns than this and uh, I would not encourage you to delete uh, one by one all of them so that would account to manually cleaning this up so we may want to discourage doing or taking that approach. I am going to show you an alternate approach and what is the alternate approach? The first thing you have to do is to just copy that special character uh, just select the row copy it and uh, just any one row and uh, take it and paste it somewhere and delete all the text which is there before and after. Uh, and so that this cell contains only this special character. Uh, so that we can select this and we can uh, use the substitute function to replace this with something else. So let's get started. I'm going to use the formula substitute. So what does substitute do? It is nothing but uh, uh, almost like the replace function which you have in Excel, uh, but it's uh, a formula. So I'm going to select the row in which this data is there that is A1 and then it is asking me to select the old text that is the text which has to be replaced. So this is what I want to replace. I want to replace that let's say with a, a space or something else. I am going to use uh, another delimiter which is not very common in uh, data sets. If you take either percentage or slash or anything else uh, asterisk. Um, um, dollar all those things they are likely to appear in any data set there is a good probability but this one is very unlikely even when you download web analytics related data they use this symbol because it's very unlikely that you would have this symbol appearing in any of your programming codes or your web links etc okay so without much of uh, deliberation i am just going to say okay so what have i got uh, I've got now this particular symbol replacing the symbol that we didn't want. But the good news for us is that uh, this character that we already had was a special character not recognized by Excel and so you cannot select and delete it or replace it but this one is an Excel character so I can easily replace it. So all I'm going to do is to do flash fill or uh, drag this. Okay, why is it that uh, this is not coming? Maybe I have not used uh, a fixed reference for this. So let me do that and now I think it will take care. So if I'm going to just uh, flash fill all of them, now I would get the special character here. Now the next uh, thing that I have to do after this is to split this into uh, different rows for which we would use the same function which we had uh, used earlier. Uh, I'm going to copy this and paste this as values and uh, why would I want to do that? Uh, I want to do that because if I want to apply any further function I don't want the formula to be a bottleneck so I'm going to do that here and now now that I have uh, 
copied and pasted them all as values. Now I'm going to go to data and I'm going to click on text column here and uh, I'm going to say uh, delimited here next and here I'm going to type other check off this other and I'm used, going to use this special character that we have inserted and next where do you want this data to be placed uh, we could place it let's say in um, F and say OK. So we have now in column D and E all the old data but in column F onwards that's exactly what we are looking for so from column F onwards we have our data. So one of the basic activities we have already performed so you can eyeball a little bit this data to make sure that all the columns are aligned well I'm going to do that uh, in a bit I'm going to just make sure that I copy this data and uh, I want to make sure I give a copy of this to you so I will leave it here and in a separate cell and now I'm going to just uh, eyeball and find out if everything is placed well. Uh, what you could do is to go and find out if anything is spilling over beyond the last column if there is any mismatch then you should find some kind of uh, anomaly here where the next column uh, might have some data set or you can even eyeball to find out if there is any broad anomaly in the data where you have uh, for example the sales you have any number or description there or things like that uh, I don't see any challenge at all as such. So uh, we have done the first activity of exporting the data from any other format into an Excel format and we have placed it in, in a format such as a data frame which is basic for any kind of uh, analysis or analytics which you want to perform whether you use any BI tool whether you want to use any programming language like Python all you would need is to make sure that your data is present in a uh, a data frame format and we have done that. At this point I also want to mention to you that if you wish to use the same uh, logic in the sense you know um, converting data from one level to another that is from a bulk data into a data frame and then next cleaning activities that we are going to do one after the other the same logic would apply uh, with large data sets as well except that you may not be having the data in Excel you might be cleaning up using either Python or the, now there are many other tools available for pre-processing of data there are even tools available which can uh, self clean the data let's not go there let's come back here and be grounded and find out what we can do with this data set so the next thing we want to do is to go and uh, look at for example the price you have the sales so this seems like uh, revenue in let's say in dollars quantity and discount so I want to let's say compute the unit price here and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say sales that is revenue divided by quantity of the item and uh, when I do that you realize that uh, it's all coming as some kind of an error why most probably this number is not being recognized as a number and excel is treating it as a text value so i'm going to use this function which is called as number value and i'm going to give this and then say okay and the moment i do that uh, in my data set you would realize that all the columns or all the places where I'm having numbers um, will get recognized as numbers. I'm going to do the same thing here for quantity as well. Number value of quantity and I'm going to drag that. Okay, I'm getting some error here which uh, probably relates to an asterisk which is here we will come and sort that out a little later but let me just uh, finish this for discount as well so first things first we are done here with uh, converting all of them into numbers as far as possible
So this is the next important step to make sure that all the numbers in your data set ultimately you want to run some graphs or you know some analysis the next uh, most important thing for you would be to convert all of them into numbers. So that uh, I have done right now here. If you um, recollect it is still a formula. So one of the things that we should be doing actually right now is to make sure that uh, this formula is converted into values. So I am going to just uh, copy all these values and uh, paste them here or I could paste it here as values. So I am just knocking off this extra column here. I am going to do the same thing for discount as well. I'm going to go here and paste it as values. So I don't need this anymore. So let me just uh, find out if my value has changed number. So I have sales here and uh, quantity here right now. And yes, so now it's doing the calculations. Okay, so what we're going to do now is to remove this uh, from the data set. And how are we going to do that? Uh, we're going to do that by let me just create another column here. I'm going to now use another function here. So I'm going to use number value and I'm going to say substitute. Actually, we don't need a separate column. I'm just doing it so that uh, you can recognize that. So I'm going to substitute here this one where we have an asterisk with an empty value. So I'm not leaving any space there. So and I'm going to say close the bracket. So now if you see, I have removed all the space values. So I can copy this data. And uh, I can put it back here and paste it as values. So we don't need these anymore. And uh, the calculation now would shift here and now I can drag it all across. So I could use a, a flash fill if I want. Let me see if that is uh, working. No, it's not working. So is so let me just drag this. Okay, there you are. So we have the values in most places except that in some places where it is a a zero then there is a problem. Now why is the value zero? So in some places you see the quantity is keyed in as uh, zero. Is that uh, desirable in any data set where you're talking about sales and uh, you have booked actually a revenue but you have not sold any uh, quantity. So what is this revenue getting booked against? So obviously there is an error in this particular row. Maybe data is not captured here or I don't know, maybe it is a incorrect value or we may need to either drop this particular row and not consider this revenue that is this uh, $45 revenue in this case or we need to, you know, knock off if you want to retain the other items here in our analysis, then we may want to consider this as uh, no value that is null value. So we can choose to do what we wish to do. Um, but we need to do something. So what is it that we are going to do? We could use the formula which says here if error then I could give it as none right and I can drag this formula everywhere here. So now what's happened is wherever I have zero value here in that particular place when the quantity is zero, uh, we are not having anything on a unit price. We could in fact do that here as well. Uh, if you wish to remove that zero here, we can choose to do that. We can remove the zero here. I will leave that to you. Okay, so let me just move all the columns here so that we have all the necessary things packed in back to where they are. 
So um, to quickly recollect, we have identified all the number columns in our data set and I have made sure that uh, they are firstly numbers. So I have converted all of the text to numbers and then I have applied um, some amount of uh, formula here if you wish to you know develop a new feature this is called as creating a new feature from an old feature that is in this case it's a very simple example of just dividing sales by quantity uh, but you could use even more complex uh, formulas for creating a new feature you want coming back uh, i have removed um, substituted asterisks all unnecessary characters uh, which are mixed up along with the numbers so that the formula works in all the cells i have also uh, blanked out cells where there are errors so that you don't find errors the advantage of doing this is that uh, when i'm going to do any formula apply any formula uh, these won't impact that's the uh, beauty of it and you're applying it as a formula otherwise you have to eyeball and remove them at uh, various places one by one manually but here we are doing it uh, automatically okay uh, to this one more thing that you wish to do probably is uh, to round this value right because it's a sales value i may want to round it to some reasonable number so let me say around it to two right so i can round it to two so that i get only two decimals because price would be only uh, to cent. Uh, if I want to, I can round up. There is a function called round up. The round up function would round it um, upwards. So 95 would become 96. So it would round that upwards. Wherever there is an opportunity, it would uh, round it upwards. I could also use a round down. Uh, it's very common that we use either a round or a round up. A round down is very uh, rarely used okay so again here if we are getting error then we could say if error we could make that as an empty value thereby ensuring that So this is nothing but the same unit price but rounded off I'm going to make this as underscore one so we have completed the numerical values so let me move ahead and now look at uh, the next activity which i wish to perform when i scroll down here i find that uh, the ship mode you know there is a regular in caps and some places regular in small tomorrow uh, when you want to slice and dice this data uh, Excel or any other application might recognize regular caps and regular small as uh, different uh, levels of the same factor. So one of the ways you could do that is to do proper of this. So PRO PR proper of this would make sure that everything is um, having only the first letter as caps. You can also choose to do upper or lower, which means everything would be either an upper case or everything would be in lower case. So this uh, is another uh, hygiene activity that you can perform uh, with text data. What we had performed earlier was with uh, numeric data. So now I have moved on to text values and wherever I have text values. So in those cases, I'm trying to clean that up. Okay, if I come to first name and uh, second name, I scroll down and realize I have some empty space here and I could delete that if I want um, or I could uh, instead apply a formula to do that. So what formula do you use to remove the empty spaces which are not uh, needed? Any idea of what uh, formula would you apply? The formula that you would apply is called as trim. So I could say trim of this and uh, once I do that, you realize that it's knocking off that space. Okay, It looks like there is a small space available, uh, but uh, technically Excel is not recognizing this as a space. So uh, we have, there were some empty spaces and we have removed that. So it's a good practice to knock this off. Okay, uh, we have similar problems with second name as well. We need to do that for second name. 
but hold on before we go and apply that to the second name what I want to do is to actually combine the first name and second name and create a common name so let me attempt doing that instead of uh, repeating this exercise for both separately so I'm going to move this here and uh, here I'm going to combine the first name and second name how would you do that one way you could do that is by using a formula that all of us know I'm going to use concatenate and uh, I could say the first name then I need to give a space in between so that would be my next slot and then the third one would be the second name if I do this I'm going to get this gentleman's name properly like that for all of them but here you realize that there are spaces in between so I could apply let's say a trim to this which I showed you before and drag it off and now you see all the empty spaces between the names or before the names have disappeared this is one way of doing it another way of doing it is to just simply go and say and 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 again if you do that you will still be able to achieve what you will achieve with concatenate and of course uh, on top of this I may need to do trim so I am showing you two different ways of doing the same thing they give you nearly same results okay I would leave it to you I'm going to knock this off I'm going to drag this all across so we have got our names here so I'll call this as full name so we have now got the full name here and that's the next activity that we have performed so I'm just going to mark off all these things where we are doing some kind of cleanup with a different color so that you recognize what is it that we are doing we have also done quite a bit of work in all these four cells so the ones in yellow are the ones that I have already touched okay now let me come to the product we are here talking about uh, the product then we have subcategory so what's missing looks like category is missing right so we have product ID then we should ideally have category and then we should have subcategory and uh, just doing a quick eyeballing of this uh, data set at least to me gives an idea that uh, OFF stands for office uh, they all seem to be office stationery and uh, for stands for furnishing or maybe furniture and um, and what else tech TEC stands for maybe technology so a uh, category needs to be created so one of the next tasks for us is to identify which columns are not there and can I create those important columns so that it is more readable I'm going to use this function called as MID so MID mid and I'm going to select this and that is the text so it says what is the starting number so starting number of uh, splitting this particular cell so the starting number is one so I want from the first character here right and how many characters do I want I need three characters so I'm going to click three and see what happens and I've got only OF uh, ideally when I click on um, three I should get all the three characters but I'm getting only two maybe there is some error maybe it's because of the splitting that we have done uh, earlier it's okay I mean as long as we are able to get what we want ideally I should have keyed in three in this formula but with four it's working well right so so be it so I have now kind of dragged that now the next uh, task for us probably could be uh, to go and uh, convert this into a full form that is uh, if we wish in many many places we may need that uh, instead of OFF I want to replace that with 
let's say um, office i want to get the full uh, name there that could be the next objective for that to happen we could do it two ways one is we could do a, a v lookup that is uh, if you have a master of all the columns in which we have the categories um, identifiers such as the abbreviations and the full name you could use a v lookup to bring that here and i will show v lookup on another occasion later in one of the other columns but now i'm going to use substitute by now you must have realized that uh, i like using the substitutes a lot and it works for me very well so i'm going to say substitute this particular cell where i'm going to find the old text off uh, with what i want to replace that with office right? but that's only one bit of it what I need to do is to do a nested substitute here if I want to replace all the three of them. So I'm going to do like any other formula, like a nested if I'm going to use a nested substitute. So I'm going to say substitute now. And for this substitute, I'm going to say F U R. I'm going to replace that with furniture and uh, close the bracket and we have another friend who needs to be substituted so another nested loop now it's getting a little complicated right so this is the third one Okay, I'm getting an error here. Why is an error? Because I have not maybe given the quotes here. That's the reason. Okay, now I should get it fine, right? I'm going to drag and uh, you see I have created category here for all of them. So I have also touched this here. But uh, I think you would have realized that using it even for uh, three different categories itself has got it complicated. So if you want to do more than three, it's going to be even more complicated. Uh, you can use uh, VLOOKUP. The next task, the last task that we have is to classify the customers maybe based on um, their uh, revenue. Uh, and segment the customers as maybe platinum, gold and uh, silver. So how are we going to do that? Firstly, we need to identify the unique customers. So I'm going to take the column which has the customer ID and I'm going to take it to a separate sheet and I'm going to go to data here and I'm going to say remove duplicates. And my data has headings in it and remove duplicate and uh, it says there were 33 duplicates and uh, 36 unique values so i've got all those uh, unique values here so the reason i did this is to show you how many um, uh, customers were unique uh, you may not necessarily use it for calculation uh, what i'm going to be doing now is if i want to actually segment the customers uh, we have to then do a little bit of uh, grouping of this data so i'm going to go and insert a pivot table now okay in this pivot table now i want to group this data by let's say the customer id and i want to group that by let's say the revenue that the customer has uh, brought in so sales so I have some of sales here of uh, each unique customer. Now I could do an average. I'm sure all of you know how to do that in Pivot. So if you want to convert that into an average, you can do that. Um, I believe that you, but uh, right now for our purpose, uh, all we want is nothing but um, we want this. So now we have to group this into various buckets. So I'm going to just copy this and paste it as text and now i could uh, group this you know if the revenues let's say greater than thousand uh, then he's uh, a platinum customer if it's between thousand and five hundred is a gold customer and if it's less than 500 it's a, a silver customer so i could use 
the if function right so if this value is greater than 1000 then I am going to say platinum else if this value is less than 500 then I am going to say silver or else I am going to say gold got it so this is customer segment so I have now got a column which has customer segment in it so I know unique customers and their customer segment now I need to just uh, use this to go back to my original data and insert this here so customer ID is the name of this particular cell where we have this so I'm going to call this as customer ID and then we have customer segment now I have to do a, a VLOOKUP I'm sure all of you have done VLOOKUP once in the past at least uh, if you haven't done it's fine we're going to be doing it right now so I'm going to use the same name here okay I'm going to do VLOOKUP what does VLOOKUP do it is actually going to look for some value from this table and retrieve and give me the corresponding value for that particular matching cell from another table so this value is the lookup value and the table or the array that i'm looking for is actually the one which is here remember here that the first column should be the identifier column which you had spotted there and it should have the same name right now if you are in a different uh, sheet then you can continue here next thing it's asking is column index number when it says column index number it says from this table which column should i pull and put it there it is the third column right so one two and third column so i'm going to give three and the last uh, it's asking do you want me to do an approximate match between the two tables or exact match so i want exact match uh, when i click on exact match it would show up as false so don't get alarmed it's fine so all we have here is we look up the value of customer id from that particular table then wherever you have your reference table for me i have it in sheet 5 so sheet 5 i've selected this uh, the array here and then 3 because the third column from here is what i want to pull and put there and then false i already gave the reason just make sure that uh, here you are making this as fixed references that is you insert dollars between the uh, reference values so that when you drag this tomorrow here it gives you the values for all of them and not an error okay here we are so now we have run a VLOOKUP and we are able to insert a customer segment into our data set right so we have also looked at how we are able to uh, do two things one is categorize the customers uh, in classical um, data analytics now this is a numerical value I have converted this numerical value into a categorical value here right so uh, it, a continuous value has been converted into a, a discrete value now this is also part of pre-processing you know converting the data into a format which we need for our analysis and that's why I had uh, shown this to you we have converted that using nested loop and then subsequently we have uh, gone back to our original data set and uh, inserted that so by now i think you must have understood that most of the cleanup in the data and uh, preparation we have done remember few things which we did not touch here for example whenever we had zero values here uh, one of as we discussed earlier one of the rules that we could use is to knock off this entire row or uh, as we did we could choose to just uh, drop 
that error which comes when you apply zero so that you are still retaining the other columns because this information is still valuable right so the customer has come and purchased this is still an useful information for the for us so we could do that or in general practice in analytics what they try to do is to impute or try to insert a value which could be let's say the average uh, value of the data set uh, it may not make sense for me to insert the average quantity here because each item is a different item but what I could do is I could look for this particular item here which is a binder and uh, there is also a description of that if I look for the same item and see on an average how many do people buy then it would be reasonable for me to either include that average value of this particular item or I could use the median value or the mode value depending on the condition this is one activity that uh, usually we try to do in real analytics projects the other thing we may also want to do is to look for extreme values in our data set I'm not going into that path right now because that takes us more into uh, EDA uh, but in general we try to do that uh, what do we mean by outliers extreme values uh, such as this 6000 is it reasonable that someone has made a purchase for 6000 yeah it is uh, but let's say it is 6 million then that's alarming why would someone make a single purchase for 6 million for office stationery? that's also still reasonable but considering the other customers and the sale value that looks like an, an institutional sale should not be there on the list if you think so then we may want to remove that value from the data set so that it does not skew or give a wrong impression when you uh, draw inferences in the data set so all those things are necessary we will talk about those things maybe in our future videos but as of now um, I wanted to emphasize on uh, these aspects okay the next thing I want to do before we uh, wrap up this particular video is to go and uh, take a shot at the turnaround time let's assume that for different customer segments uh, you might have different turnaround times between the order date and the shipping date right how fast how responsive are we so the way I could do that is to run a formula of this minus this but I am facing an error here is that because this is actually a date field or a number field so I am going to choose various options but it still doesn't work it, it just means that like my number values that I had uh, earlier this is not being recognized as a date or a number but it's still being recognized as uh, text so I can use the same strategy that I applied earlier number value of uh, let's say this minus the number value of this and this convert this uh, into a number okay I got it so between uh, 8th of September and 2nd of September we have uh, six days so I've got that in the format that I want and so now I can drag this all across and you realize that it's uh, able to populate this so uh, what I have done now is to also generate another feature instead of using the date as such now I don't need the date actually all I need is the turnaround time so this way we could do a variety of uh, things uh, what I have talked about here are briefly a set of things that I do as I mentioned earlier there could be uh, many more uh, things that you could do or even a simpler way of doing it I'm sure there are smarter people in this group who would be able to uh, throw light on maybe smarter ways of doing it I appreciate if you can drop them in the comments yes that would be nice and uh, in case you have not picked up this file you can do so I'm going to include this uh, file that is all the analysis that you have seen here plus the raw data you can just take that and you can run along with me so that you will know exactly how to do this yourself later okay guys so with that it's time to wrap up this video looking forward to seeing you in uh, other such videos if you are interested in any specific topic appreciate you drop a note in the comment and i will try to build a small content around that thank you